Alright, so the nut is done, let's move on to the bridge. As you can see on part 1 I made a drawing of an original 53S125 I own and I want to replicate it using some massive piece of rosewood. As you can see and maybe know there are a few different types of guitar bridges. Here is the foot obviously, um, I'm not gonna use it, this is a cheap Chinese one. It comes from China. This one is a dark bone bridge and what I like is that it wiggles because it isn't flat at the bottom. Because we are using a Bixby, we would get some friction on the saddles because of the string moving whilst using the Bixby. Um, so I like this very much. This one is a classical uh, Gibson ABR1 with adjustable saddles through this slotted screw. There are some hybrids. This is uh, a wooden bridge and it has an inlay with a plastic or bone and the original style of these um, Gibson ES125 saddles are made of solid wood. But as I said, because we are using a Bixby, I want to combine every single of them. I want to make a bottom who can rock. I want to use this kind of hybrid. I want to use a wooden housing for this bone blank. It's unbleached. I don't want to inlay a straight piece. I want to inlay every single saddle. I guess I can't move, make it adjustable because I think I'm not able to tap a thread into a bone. But I want to make a wooden bridge which looks like a ABR1, which can rock and wiggle, which has a wooden housing and a bone inlays. Okay, let's start. I am so ready. Before I start and lay out the bridge and the foot, I want to square up this side of the bridge plank. Last shot, starting with the pressure at the start and then put my pressure on the already flattened surface. Next I'm gonna lay out the foot says 137.5 millimeters, so somewhere around here and the bridge says 86. So we are happy enough to get the foot and the bridge from one straight piece. We have a lot of leftover. It's thick. I want to make it 13 here and there. Don't need to be that accurate at this point. Just want to have enough leftover, but not that much. Maybe want to take a little bit more for the bridge. I took 18. So let's cut it on the bench. So Holy smoke, it really smells like roses. Just want to sand down the bandsaw marks. Rosewood is so, so greasy, so oily. Clogs up the sandpaper so fast. Is it there? Checking for squareness. And for thickness, we want to have 15.5 millimeters. It's a little bit too thick right here, so let's continue sanding. Rather doing it by planing. That's enough to mark out for the, this chamfer. Four and a half.
and four millimeter on the sides. And I want to plane it down. I actually I could route it, but I think I have much more control with a plane and hand tools to see where I'm landing. Let's make both sides like this. So I came in pretty close and I want to refine it. I will take some round stick, wrap some sandpaper and make a contour. This radius was too big so I take a 10 millimeter wooden dowel and try it again. Ended up using a 8mm wooden dowel to make this contour. It looks pretty nice already. Left some leeway for the final sanding of the whole foot. So yeah, let's move on. Drawing out this area. Marked out the middle. The drawing says 8.5mm from the middle thickness. So I just want to score it just in the middle. With one indent so I can see it. You want to create this contour. Let's simply <laughs> draw it. I want to talk about post spacing. Gibson ABR1, even original bridges from Gibson, Historics or whatever, have different post spacings. They are in between 72.5 and 75 or 74 millimeters. So I would like to use a post spacing where I can easily swap the bridge with an ABR1. So I want to make something, a space where I can easily put it on. I will go for 73.5 because all my Gibsons have this spacing, except for the old 53. It has 72.5, but it's a wooden made and it's maybe also handmade like I do because they used to have the machines, but I will take 73.5 Let's drill for the posts. I made myself a death stop about six millimeters. So let's go. So now it's time to send the contour of the guitar top to the foot. We have some evidence of the original bridge, so we know where to measure. Marked out the middle and I take this little device to get the contour. It's not that much of a radius, but it is. Let's draw the curve onto the foot. And we we'll need to be that 100% precise because we will sand a lot now. So let's cut it and sand it to this line and the rest we are doing by sanding it directly on the guitar top. Next thing to do... What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? ...do is to stick on some sandpaper to the top of the guitar. I don't want to stick it directly. I use low tag again. Mark out somehow where the bridge will land. I already did it. Just take our bridge, press it on and sand. You already get some sanding marks so I will smooth it out with my oscillating spindle sander and then we can come up and really fit it onto the top. We are almost there. I just want to make some pencil stripes so I can control my process. And I also marked out the travel side and let's sand it. 
I also want to put some pressure on the top because of the load, the pressure of the loaded strings will push down the arch just a little bit and the bridge won't fit at the very ends anymore. So I want to put pressure on it just a little bit. Just in the middle, just a little bit more. Just one last pass. I'll just give it a sanding and the foot is done. Yeah! 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 The very last thing I want to do is to drill a one millimeter hole all through the foot because of the possibility to locate the bridge with pins on the guitar top. Um, I'm a very heavy player, I don't want to let the bridge slip and change everything. I'm able to put some nails in it and keep it from moving. Nice. Let's mount the posts. Might have to cut this off, but that's no problem. As I said, post spacing allows to switch between different bridges. The tunomatic will fit perfectly, as you see. I have to cut off the posts, but I will do it when I reassemble the whole guitar and put the strings on and make in the correct setup. I will mark it out and cut it off. Let's start with the bridge. I already measured out and I will cut it now to a rough shape. Already measured the posts and yeah, cut it to size. And now let's drill the holes. Let's see if the spacing is right. Perfect. Now the fun part begins. I need to lay out the string spacing and also the intonation steps. This will be a long job, I think, but I will do it off camera and we will see us in a minute. One eternity later. Okay, so let's see what I have done. I marked out the intonation compensation and on the G string I took the wounded compensation and oh, see that I made a mistake right here. I have to move them to here. So I will drill with a three and a half millimeter and clean it out. I set it up a depth stop and let the fun begin. to clean it out, make it straight. I just want to get rid of this too, taking the plane. As you can see, it looks really well. And the next step is to make some uh, saddles out made out of bone and I want to make it just like this to just get them in let's see this is how I want to make them so I have to make six of this bone inserts for the bridge So now we have the intonation compensation and I just need to sand in the radius curve of nine and a half or ten inch radius. If you ever wonder why I have so long nails, guess you know I'm a guitar player. Okay, let's sand. Okay, so I pulled the teeth out again and let's move on to the bottom. I want to make this curve on the bottom 
And I also want to make this recess for the wheels. And as I said, I also want to make this bottom section. It's, it's not flat, it's, it has a little roof or something like that. So it can rock on the foot and can make things easier when using a Bixby. Let's draw it out. I think I just simply put on the wheels, make myself a line here and there. These wheels are two and a half millimeter thick, so I will cut out three millimeters and for this rocking section I will take two and a half millimeters. I will do it off camera. Yeah, something like that. This is obviously not the right tool for this, because it has the bevel at the bottom. I would need the bevel here and not there. Last step will be to block off all the corners, and this is <laughs> this is something I like very much. You can now give it the final smooth shape. When you're working with rosewood or ebony, your hands will get so dirty. It will look this. Disgusting, just like mine, but I'm a craftsman. I used to work. These are my most favorite tools in life <laughs> Sanding this delicate edge is so satisfying really this is a glimpse how it will look when it's oiled. Yeah, fun, really fun. So before I oil it, I will go on with some compressed air and really blow all the open pores out of the wood dust. But before that, I will give it a shot with the steel wool because it will smooth it out and make it already really shiny. I love steel wool, but after using it, you have to clean up everything because in case you have a guitar around, there are there is a pickup in it. It's magnetic and you will maybe destroy your electronics or maybe with some power tools. You surely want to get rid of it before you go any further. Yeah, lovely, really. Look at this beautiful piece of wood. Super shiny. <laughs> I should have done this before I grew in the posts. So cool. Just look at it, how it starts to shine.
Now we have to vacuum the magnetic dust. Let's oil it. Yeah. So let it soak for a few minutes and then clean it off again. And after drying, I think I will come with a second coat when I oil the fretboard again. A second time I will oil this too. It's done. I really like how it came out. It's just the first coat of oil and yeah, it functions how I want. It rocks really well. I think I have to come down with the saddles, but I will do that when I, I will fine tune the bridge when I string up the guitar and making the whole setup. But yeah, I would call this done.